Hello and welcome to the Kalashnikov and today I do have a very interesting video to share with you. This is going to be the first in a series of analysis videos where I analyze a game I played earlier, either as killer or a survivor. I point out the mistakes I made, the tactics I did right, and in the process hopefully you can learn a thing or two on how to play as a setting killer or how to play as a survivor. This particular game I played yesterday was very very interesting. This was a game I played as a trapper at the Macmillan Estate against a team of Survive with Friends. Now, the reason why this particular uh, game was very interesting is because I came up against a team that employs a tactic, which is the bait tactic, where you basically have one of the survivors who acts as bait. That survivor tries to draw your attention. You spend the entire game chasing that survivor, while the other three survivors do gens, they cleanse totems, take down hooks, whatever, and at the end of the day, even though you might be successful in killing that one survivor you're chasing, the other three would escape. So this is a very common tactic employed by advanced uh, Survive with Friends groups. And right now, you can see that at the very beginning of the game, you can see right now that I have spotted the bait right here. This was a Nia running Adrenaline. Um, I'm sorry, not Adrenaline, uh, Object of Obsession. This is Object of Obsession right here. You can see I can see her and she can see me. Now, most killers in this kind of scenario would spend time going straight after such a survivor. Like, oh, I see you, I'm going to kill you right now because you're running an object of obsession. In my humble opinion, this is often a big mistake. Why? Because even though you might be able to down that survivor, in most cases, such survivors are typically very good at looping and juking. So you're prob probably going to spend the entire game chasing this one particular survivor. Now. Let me quickly skip to the very end here and show you her build, uh, Nia's build. Alright, so spoiler alert, I ended up killing all four of them. But you can see it was Psycho. Psycho was the player who acted as bait. And you can see the build right here. She had self-care, which is an absolute necessity for such survivors. And then decisive strike. You're always going to have decisive strike and self-care with such survivors. Then she also had Dead Hard. You're also going to always have uh, an exhaustion perk with these survivors. Typically, they don't run Spin Burst, from my experience. They typically run Life, Balance Landing, or Dead Hard. It's usually often Dead Hard. And then finally, she had Object of Obsession. Some other survivors would, would run Adrenaline and not Object of Obsession. But this is the typical build for such survivors who act as bait Decisive Strike, Self Care, one Exhaustion perk, and then one of Adrenaline or object of obsession and of course of course she had a purple flashlight <laughs> just to make me just make me mad all right but let's go let's go to the game now all right so i see her and she's running towards me at this point but i what do i do i completely ignore her i pay no attention to nia and it's kind of a shame that i did not record the audio for this particular game because she was doing her best to distract me. She was using a flashlight, like, you know, tick, 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 annoyingly trying to uh, bait me into chasing her, but I ignored her completely. I did not pay her any attention. Uh, let's just skip ahead. So, right now, I discovered that someone was working on this gen. So, I came over here, tried to, uh, you know, damage the gen, look for other survivors who are working on gens. And right, so right here, you can see the Nia again with the flashlight. Again, Running after me, trying to get my attention, but what do I do? I completely ignore her. I don't fall for the bait. This is how you want to play as the killer in such a scenario. If you have a survivor who is desperately trying to get your attention, do not take the bait. Just focus on the other survivors because at this point, you're practically playing against three survivors and not four survivors. You've got three survivors who are actually doing gens, and then you have a clown, the first survivor, who's just running around after you, trying to get your attention. So, at this point, she is not a threat to me in any way whatsoever. That's how you want to think. Alright. So, again, I ignore her. Let's just skip ahead. Over here. So, eventually, I, I found a Nia with a toolbox who was actually doing gens. So, I go after the particular Nia. I completely ignored the other Nia with the flashlight. And then over here, I was able to down the Nia. And of course, because the other Nia with the flashlight is right behind me, I pick up this Nia facing the wall. 
just in case you're new to the game, you're, you're finding my channel for the very first time and you're new to Dead by Daylight, typically whenever you want to pick up a survivor, it's always best that you look towards either a wall or a tree so as to avoid getting stunned by a flashlight. Because if I turned the other way and I faced an uh, open space, the other near the flashlight would have, would have been able to stun me with the flashlight. So that's why it's always advisable that you face a wall or a tree or an object whenever you're picking up a survivor from the ground. All right. So what do I do? I ended up uh, hooking the Nia. And now, because, let me just scroll back a little bit. Because I've been able to hook the first Nia, I am now actually free to go after this annoying Nia. I hit her the first time. <laughs> so I'm now like, okay, I have time for you. Let's, let's do this, all right? Let's do this. So I'm just gonna skip all this parts. Basically, this was a pretty good Nia at uh, Pilot Lupin. She was running around. I chased her. Uh, let's let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's see what's the next uh, thing that happens here. All right. Uh, all right. So I had Nosis calling. So again, I kept going after this particular Nia, and of course she ends she ends up uh, <laughs> stepping on my trap that I placed out here, and of course I taunt her as well. I pick. I hit her. And then I pick her up. Now she's got decisive strike, so I'm prepared to take the decisive strike. She decisive strikes me, but that's okay. Now it's out of the way, and I can chase her. She tries to use a flashlight, but she fails. I also was not able to hit her there. I, I kind of fucked up right there, but it's okay. So eventually I chase her, I chase her, I chase her. Just for a while. For a while, let's um, just skip ahead. Okay, let's do this. And, of course, she tries to 360 me. I hit her on the ground and pick her up. And now, with the decisive strike out of the way, I go ahead and I hook her on this hook. Okay? So let's, let's do that. Alright. So, I hooked her. I set a trap right here. Alright. And then, I went... Head over here, picked up the second trap. So what I'm basically doing right now is I am camping this particular Nia. I'm camping this Nia because I know for a fact that this was a group of survivor friends and I knew that the other survivors were going to come after her to come and try and save her. I knew that. So what do I do? I simply just walked around, patrolled for now. Okay, I find a mag. I pretend like I'm going after the Meg. Obviously, at this point, the Meg tells her other friends that, Hey, hey, you know, he's after me. Go go save Nia. I come over here, quickly damage this gen. I go back to Nia because I suspect at this point, one of the other survivors is going to come for the save. So I come back right here, make sure that no one is going for the save. And you can see right here, that was the uh, Jake who just disarmed my trap. So what do I do? I pick up this trap right now. I go to where Nia is. And what do I do? So there's a trap right there that's blocked this particular path. This is one of the things you want to do as Trapper. Whenever you're playing as Trapper, if you're trying to camp a hook, try to seal off as many paths as possible towards that hook. So there was a path right here coming from this direction, which I did place a trap on. So what do I do next? I place another trap on the other side. Oh, let's just, let me just play this. Alright, so over okay, so that's a trap right there. So I, I see a Meg crouching. I hit the Meg, I chase her away. They do the second gen, that's fine. Now I place a trap. Alright. So I just make sure there's no one else around. Now I place a trap right here as well. So basically I have sealed off two spots now right now. I've sealed off this particular angle and I've sealed off the other angle as well. So what do I do? I now camp. And yes, as a killer, there are times when you should camp. You can camp when you're playing against a team of survivor friends and you know these guys are very altruistic you know for a fact they're gonna come and try and save their buddy and in this particular case where you have a survivor like this like this particular Nia who's gonna be a nuisance with her purple flashlight I would rather much prefer to camp and kill her than allow her to get off the hook and then later on she comes and stuns me with a flashlight whenever I pick up another survivor so I didn't want that to happen so I damaged this gen and now, so basically, I camp, I camp. Alright. So, at this point right now, the other Nia comes for the save. I hit the Nia. She picks up. Take a look at this. Now, now, the Nia I just hit is able to save the Nia with the purple flashlight. 
But take a look at, uh, let's see, let me just move this. Now Jake, who also came for the save, got himself in a trap. He got trapped. And then we also have Meg. So my assumption that this was a very altruistic team of Survivor Friends was actually true because all three of them came for the save. And in the process, Jake ended up getting himself trapped, okay? So I go ahead right now, I hit Meg, Jake is freed, so now all four of them are injured, but what do I do? I go after my main target, which is the Nia, she jumps the pallet, I fool her, oh, actually she doesn't, so I just, <laughs> I just launched and hit her, okay, so now, Nia is down, but just in case you're new to the game, you're new as pl plain as killer, the problem with downing Nia at this point right now is because is that she uh, excuse me just a second um she fell directly on the ground next to a pallet you can see right now she is next to a pallet so if i had chosen to pick her up right here let me just get that right oh crap where is it all right Right here. Yeah, okay. If I had decided to pick up Nia right here, another one of the survivors could just simply come and then use this pallet to stun me. So I couldn't pick Nia up at this point. So what do I do? I try to hunt the other survivors, chase them away as far as possible. Jake is up here trying to heal himself. So I decided to go after Jake. But then I noticed that the other Nia is over here. Running. So I simply go ahead. I downed the Nia, so that's two down, we got two more to go, and now Nurse's Calling, which is, which by the way, Nurse's Calling is one of my favorite killer plugins, Nurse's Calling is telling me that Jake is over there, so what do I do? I go after Jake. So he tries his best, uh, he stuns me, but still he goes down, so now it's three down, one to go. Alright, so I'm actively looking for the other survivor, but now I can see right here, you can see at the bottom, that she healed herself. So I know for a fact that she wasn't close by because if she was healing close by, Nurse's Calling would have shown me her aura as well. So at this point, I know she's pretty far away. So what do I do? I go straight for the Nia who's next to the pallet. I pick her up because I know there's no time for the other Meg in this case to come save her. I go ahead and I simply hook her. Bye bye, toxic survivor. And that's how you deal with such toxic survivors, okay? She's dead. That's it. Now, I see the Meg healing the Jake, so what do I do? I go straight after the Meg. I chase her away. Then I bait her. I hit her. Let me just uh, go ahead and skip all this, because this is a little bit boring. So I chased her, chased her, chased her. Eventually, I downed her. I picked her up. Went over here to this hook, because I had Iron Grasp. I hooked her. So at this point, it's game done, right? But hold on, there's a lot of drama to come. So I keep going. I pick up the Nia. And uh, I think I took her to the basement. Yep. I took her to the basement. I hooked her. Now at this point, I'm looking for the, uh, for the Jake. Because he's the last one, not on the hook. And now something very interesting happens. Now take a look at that. The Meg actually Kobe's off. <sighs> I hate it when this happens. Because it is so annoying. You've done all the hard work. You've downed all four survivors. You've killed one of them already. And then one of them on the hook, Kobe's off. This can literally change the entire game in the hands of survivors. So what do I do? Well, I simply go back right there. And I taunt the Meg a little bit. I chase her around a little bit. And then I eventually downed her. And then I... Of course, I put her on the hook again, and then I finally I go after my target, my last target, which is Jake. So, yeah, I pick up Jake, and just as I'm about to hook up Jake, guess what happens? He also had decisive strike. <laughs> Jake also decisive strikes me. The other three survivors are dead. The hatch is open. Now I have to find Jake as quickly as possible, but he didn't have a chance. He didn't have a chance against me. He did his very best. He ran, you know, ah! I'm gonna find the hatch. I'm gonna find the hatch. Ah! You know, but it didn't quite work out for him. I got him eventually, and uh, yeah, that's how I was able to kill all four survivors. And as you can see, this was a pretty decent team of, of, of survivors. 
you had a rank 6, rank 7, rank 5, and a rank 2. And this was pretty strong. They had a purple flashlight, they had the um, syringe as well for instant heal. But basically the whole point I'm trying to raise here is at the very beginning, back here, when I saw the Nia with the object of obsession, ob obsession I chose to ignore her and just went after my own business. So the next time you actually go up against a team of survivors friends that has this kind of tactic where you have one survivor who is using object of obsession or you have a survivor who is desperately trying to get your attention by running right in front of you, using a flashlight, just ignore them, go after the other survivors because at that point really that survivor is not a threat to you. They're not doing gens, they're not cleansing totems, they're just running around making a fool of themselves, being clowns. That's how you should think. Do not fall for the bait. Just go after the other, other, other survivors and in most cases you will actually be successful at the end of the game. So there you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed this analysis. If you have any questions about this particular tactic I employed or you had anything else you want to add, be sure to drop it in the comment section below and let me know what you thought about this particular game. And of course if you liked the video do like, comment, subscribe. I'll be uploading more tutorials like this as I as the days go by. I'll be uploading tutorials as often as I can. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.